What's up guys, welcome to Hermesville. So this video is gonna be part two of my garden fence installation. Uh, in the first part, we, uh, we got the lines laid out. Uh, we've got all the holes dug and I have the posts set down into the ground. So I used eight foot posts and I dug two foot holes down into the ground. So the fence is gonna be about six feet high. So in part two today, what we're gonna be doing is staining the wood. And I'm not gonna show too much of that because um, Watching paint being applied is about as entertaining as watching paint dry. So um, I'll show a little bit of that, but then we'll move on to something else. Um, after we get the wood post stained, we're going to be attaching the, um, the poly fencing. Um, I had the help of my wife for that one. It made it super quick. Uh, we worked, to work well together as a team. After attaching the poly fencing, we're going to be working on the gates. I'm going to have two different gates in two different locations just to give me a few different access points to the garden and I'm going to show you how I do all that today. Please do me a big favor and go ahead and smash that like button. It really helps out the channel. So we've gotten most of our wood posts stained. I ran out of stain, so I've got a few more left to do, but we're gonna go ahead and start the fence. The fence I got is a Critter Fence 800. I got it from CritterFence.com. It's a poly fence, it's plastic. Uh, it's seven and a half feet tall. I'm going to be attaching this fence with a air compressor and a staple gun. This is an Easy E model. Pneumatic stapler takes 3 8 inch crown, 22 gauge staples. As far as the staples, this is going to be an outdoor application, so I would definitely recommend stainless steel. Uh, if you use galvanized, it uh, has some protection, but it will rust over time. Stainless steel will not rust. Putting it, I'm stapling it right there because it always tries to pull back this way and that it can't because then it, if it tries to slide back this way it'll catch right there and it won't slide. Thank you. 
All right, so the first thing I'm doing here is I'm just taking a two by four and laying it flat down across the bottom of where the gate is gonna be. Um, the reason I do that is just to kind of give it somewhat of a, a level and square base for the bottom of the gate and also close the gap a little bit so um, it'll be harder for things to dig out from underneath it. I got these little brackets from Lowe's. Um, technically they're for bridging, for cross bridging on um, joists and things like that. But uh, they were only 30 cents a piece so I'm going to try to use them for this and hopefully it works. So here's a little update to the garden fence. It's a snowy day in January. So I have one gate here. A um, few issues I ran into with this gate. So when I put the posts in the ground, I did not set them in concrete. Um, I'm a part-time homesteader, so I didn't want to spend the extra money for concrete or the extra time it would take, so I just kind of put them in the ground, in the dirt. Um, when I set them, I set them plumb, but, you know, they may have shifted a little bit, and uh, the posts themselves are not exactly straight. So uh, when I went to attach the gate, I ran into a little issue uh, down here. Uh, it was the edge of my gate was blocking up against the, the post and if you see up top here I got a little bit of a gap so I made it work um, you know at the end of the day all I needed to do is just keep out keep out rabbit and deer so uh, it's doing his job okay so on this side I have about an eight foot opening and uh, I wanted just a little bit wider opening in case I ever need to back a vehicle or truck back up in here. Um, so I only have one of these gates completed so far. Again, I'm a part-time homesteader right now. I've got a full-time job, two-year-old son. Uh, so very, very busy schedule. So I haven't gotten to the other gate yet, but I will get it done before the spring. Um, I'm going to do just another gate. 
some type of latch in the center. This gate construction was pretty simple. Um, I just used some two by fours. Uh, got my dimensions, and then you know I measured and cut accordingly. I already had a lot of these brackets here and these angled brackets here and screws. I already had that on hand, so I just installed it and fastened it together that way. I didn't want to go out and buy a Craig jig or anything like that. Um, that's probably a better way to do it, but again, I'm on a budget and uh, I didn't want to go out and spend a lot more money on, on this gate. So.